Velkommen alle sammen. So, in many Viking TV shows and movies, we see the hero about to die, right? And they reach for their sword uh, so he can get into Valhalla, the afterlife. Was this an actual belief? In the Norse religion, if you die without your sword in your hand, uh, do you go to hell? No, of course not. So in this video, I'm just quickly going over uh, what some of the sources say uh, and answering this question. So this reaching for the sword thing to get into Valhalla, it shows up in uh, the first in the old Kirk Douglas Vikings movie a long time ago, and then all the other Viking TV shows and movies have kind of ran with it uh, since then. But this act is actually mentioned nowhere in any of the primary sources, and there's no reason to believe that it was ever done. So what does get you into Valhalla? Well, from all the attestations, the only ones who were said to go to Valhalla uh, were supposed to be Vorpendaven men. Um, so men who died from weapons specifically, and then Odin chooses half of them to go to Valhalla, and then the other half go to Freya in Folkvanger. Like most of you know already before, so I'm not going to speak what these places are, Folkvanger or Valhalla or properly called Valhurd, because I've done other videos on that, but for now, it would seem that only men who have died in battle go to Valhalla. Uh, but there are a couple problems with that. A couple skaldic poems say something differently, and remember the skaldic poems are said to be the oldest and most reliable sources that we have. In the poem Eiriksmål, the Norwegian king Eirik Bloodaxe uh, was said to go to Valhalla. Uh, now there are a few sources saying different things about him, uh, but the more reliable ones actually say that he was assassinated and he didn't actually die in battle. Uh, in another skaldic poem, Håkon uh, King Håkon was said to go to Valhalla even though he was actually a Christian. Uh, also, he didn't exactly die in battle either. He was shot by an arrow in the arm and he died from the wounds some time later. And even then, he still goes to Valhalla. So no, you don't have to die with a weapon in hand to go to Valhalla. Uh, it seems that you don't even have to die in battle really. Um, if you want to know what it really takes to get into Valhalla, I think it's more about what state of mind you're in at the time of death. This is what makes the most sense, um, and these are just my thoughts, by the way. I haven't read this in, in any sources elsewhere, so let me know what you guys think, but I'll try and explain it as best I can now. Getting to Valhalla is about being in this ecstatic state of mind, as one would be in battle, but of course, this can be experienced uh, many other times as well. Our modern understanding might call this uh, ecstatic state of mind uh, adrenaline, or fight or flight response, or dopamine rush, something like that. But in the Old Norse beliefs, this feeling in our bodies was something spiritual. It was called Odr, directly translated meaning frenzy, rage, ecstasy, uh, things like that. And this is what Odin's name means too, by the way, as you can see here. So when this frenzy today that we might call an adrenaline rush or fight or flight response, whatever, old cultures viewed this as something spiritual, that a god was coming in and possessing your body for a certain amount of time in battle, in sex, in uh, painful moments, uh, trance-like states, drug-induced states, uh, say that uh, also animal sacrifice rituals too, drinking the blood of the animal, things like that. We have records of uh, all over Europe happening. Uh, so it makes sense that when Odr comes in and possesses you in certain moments of frenzy and you die when you're already in this state, that's when you go to Odin, the frenzied one, the lord of the frenzied in Valhalla. Like you are already in this frenzied state of mind when you die, when you're in battle for example, and then when you pass into the realm of the dead, you go directly to God, becoming a part of this one great being, uh, again, as you were before you were born. This is very similar to the um, uh, Buddhist or Hindu beliefs, um, when you're reincarnated over and over again until you reach your full kind of karma and spiritual awakening and then you die and then you become part of God, breaking that reincarnation cycle. We are related religions after all, we're separated by 7,000 years of evolution, uh, big differences in the culture, and you know, also remember the Germanic tribes were a very warlike people, so full-on spiritual awakening in the East has something to do with meditation and finding inner peace and relaxing and things like that. 
in the Germanic world, this same spiritual awakening kind of had to do with war spirit, frenzy, rage, and things like that. So lots of differences, as you can see, were separated by uh, 7,000 years of evolution, but the core original spiritual beliefs were the same in all Indo-European religions. I'll do one more source for you all before I finish. Uh, we have one very famous poem where the hero Helgi dies and he goes to Valhalla and then he's reincarnated anyway. So, you know, don't put too much focus on Valhalla or Hel. There is no way that we can be sure what happens there anyway. But the core afterlife uh, beliefs in our religion is reincarnation. There are many sources for this and also plenty of real evidence that reincarnation uh, does exist. And I'll maybe put some links below to some of those uh, studies. So instead of you know trying to figure out how to reach uh, our paradise in Valhalla, uh, I would recommend figuring out how to make the world a better place for your children and your descendants because you might one day be reborn and have to live in the place that we leave behind. Believe in reincarnation if you want, you don't have to, I'm just saying it would be better for the world and future generations, at least if we did believe in it. So uh, that's all for this video, hope you learned something, and we see you next time.